Hi everyone, welcome back to Studio 33, Art by Kay. My name's Kay and I'm here today to show you a technique, a type of bloom technique, which I've learned over the last um, year. And um, I just use Australian Floetrol as a pouring medium and as a cell activator. And I use it in my base as well as my main colors. And my goal is just to keep art as simple and easy as possible so that anyone can do it. So if I can do it, you can do it too. Okay, so I bought these um, beautiful big ceramic tile the other day at um, one of the local hardware stores. It was on special by a pack of eight, I think, for around $15. So for just less than $2, I've got this lovely piece that I can use to do my artwork on. It's 30 by 60. And my intention is um, to try and show you guys how you can use other than canvases. Uh, we all love to paint on canvas, but there's only a limited number of places um, in your home to put them, or maybe you're already selling them online, I don't know. But I thought if we can um, do some things that, you know, can be useful for around the home or to give away as gifts, um, it just makes a great medium for, for doing our art. And also, if you totally mess it up, very, very easy to wipe it off a tile um, and then use, reuse that paint for a base maybe for another piece that you're going to do. Um, so the idea here is these pieces are going to be for a table centerpiece for an outdoor table or you could even use it for an indoor table. Um, so a beautiful piece of art that you can then put your platter or something like that on top of. I will be um, resining this later with a resin that is um, okay for heat to be on it up to 200 degrees centigrade and also has um, ultraviolet protection um, and so it should be easily able to be put outside with no problem whatsoever to use as a huge trivet. Um, so without further ado I will now go on with the colours that we're going to use today. Um, I have already pre-mixed my paints and I will do a quick check of the um, pouring consistency to make sure they're all the same. So that's your biggest challenge is just to make sure that your paints are all mixed to about the same consistency. Um, if you have one that's a lot thinner or a lot thicker than the others, it will cause the thin one to run over the thicker ones and that can often be why you don't get what you want. So the way I check to see um, whether the paints are the same consistency is I've just kept uh, yellow pages, which I no longer use uh, for phone numbers. Just rip a page of that out. And then I just apply little pieces of um, each paint, little puddle. Try and keep the puddles the same because if you've got one puddle a lot bigger, it will run faster just to do with gravity and, and all that scientific stuff. Um, so you try and keep them all the same. Gold, which is my favorite gold in the whole world okay so now i'm just going to pick that up and see how fast they run and i don't think you can see that but you can see now i'll let it run for a second whoops Woo! let it run for a second okay so you can see there that they've all run pretty much the same if the one was very thin, it would have run to the bottom in that time. Um, so they're slightly different, but close enough that they're, they're not going to interfere with each other. Okay, so the paint we're going to use for our base is Araldo um, White. 
and I'm going to have mixed that with Floetrol already to the same consistency. So I'm just going to cover the canvas. Well, it's not a canvas, it's a tile today. Uh, first of all, the preparation that I use for a ceramic tile is simply to spray some isopropyl alcohol onto a paper towel and then just literally wipe it clean. Okay, so we're going to just spread the, and I will speed this part up. Um, you don't really need to see me spreading all this. So I'm just spreading this to just enough to cover the whole tile, not too thick, not too thin, just make sure it's covered all areas and I'm also going to make sure I just cover the edges as well so that when the paint runs over there it's got something to sort of stick on to and you've already covered it. You can just use your finger literally to run the paint along. Make sure you've got all your edges covered. Okay, that should be about it. Let's bring it back into view for you. It's very hard. I can't see because I'm trying to be straight over the top for you. I can't actually see the um, the camera to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the composition I'm going to do is I'll have um, some flowers on the, sorry, petals underneath, and then I'm going to bring my flowers from here up to here. May place another one over here. Okay. So the petals I'm going to be using the um, Global Green Deep and the green light, global green light. They're my favourite colours for my leaves at the moment. And I'm going to be using a cell activator that's made out of um, global black paint mixed with Australian flow troll, about one to four, it's approximately. And it's just so that it just um, drips off the end of the little wooden paddle pop stick. Um, for about four seconds. Okay, so I'm just doing my little bits of greenery first. And then the flowers will hopefully be blown over the top of that. I may do one over in the corner here. Just random, this garden is random. Okay, now uh, today I think I'll use my little mini blower um, because I'm going to have trouble trying to blow by mouth on something this size, which will be fine. Okay, now I'm just going to put the cell activator on there um, so that I'm probably going to blow these out towards the outer edges. So I'm going to put the cell activator, if I would open the bottle that would help. Just a little bit of cell activator just on the edge and we're going to blow these outwards and I can always add more leaves later if I've decided there's not enough on there. Right, so I'd like to just burst some bubbles as well um, just with my little heat embossing tool. These can be bought online in Australia from quite a lot of different places. It's just a heat embossing tool. It blows hot air onto the um, artwork to burst any bubbles. You don't want to overheat your paint because uh, it can 
on the skin, particularly if you're using house paint, which I don't use. I don't use any house paint. Um, I literally just use acrylic artist paints mixed with Floetrol. So I don't usually get a skin forming with that. Okay, well, let's see how we go. Okay. So if you look at that and you think, oh, I'd really like to change those a little bit, control it a bit better. Um, you can just get a straw, a normal paper straw. So I'm just going to um, this one here, just give it a bit more shape. And so you can just blow those out slightly with a straw just to, you know, change the shape or whatever it is you want to do. As you can see, lots of beautiful cells have formed. Okay, now we'll put our flowers on. So I'm going to mix up these colors a bit. Um, I'll do some pinks, the blue, purple, put a little bit of yellow on to get, and put a bit, bit of gold or copper. So on we go. I'll use basically three colours on each flower um, and add the yellow and the gold and then the cell activator or maybe the yellow and the copper and then the cell activator. So there's my three colours. yellow right now we're going to put on the cell activator pop that in the middle and again I'll have to blow it out with the mini blower now with the mini blower you hold it up high and then start coming down towards your flower and as you get closer you'll see the airflow hit the paint and then once it's hitting the center then you blow out i usually like to do about mm, 
five or six petals. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, looks like my mini blower has decided to completely die on me. So I'll just have a little go at blowing these out. Got some beautiful cells in some of these here. Lovely. Just try and blow this one out a bit more. Right, I think we could do with another one up here. It's a bit of a blank spot. I did it around the wrong way. Doesn't matter at all. So I'll have to try and blow that out with a straw. So I'm having trouble reaching in there. Um, and when I actually draw the petals in. Um, that'd be quite cute actually. <laughs> okay, so it happens as people say with your equipment stopping halfway through doing something. Not to worry. So now I'll just try and um, draw some petals into this. There's some nice selectivity in there anyway. So first of all, I'll hit it with the uh, embossing tool, bring up any extra cells. And now I'll just get my, it's a skewer, but it's a thicker one. I'm just going to use the blunt end of the skewer to now draw in some shape. Always make sure you've got a paper towel handy to wipe off the skewer in between each one. Otherwise you'll end up with um, a muddy mess where you're dragging them all in together. So I just try and bring those in. Just look for what looks like a natural place to go, which in here would be there. Just to create the structure of your petals. And 
This is the fun part. I like doing this. With the leaves, I just do a little, bring them in a little bit like that. Just gives them a bit of shape. Um, I don't think that's too bad, really. So with the centers of the flowers, you can either do a little swirl like I just did there, or you can do a little um, balloon kiss into the center, and that makes a nice little center as well. So um, to do that, I would just place a tiny bit more of the yellow because that's what I wanted to do is to have like a slightly yellow centre to these particular flowers just to make them bright and cheery and happy. I'll just place that in there. I find if you're doing um, trying to balloon kiss into the centre of something rather than putting the paint onto the balloon and then pressing it in actually add the paint to the painting and then kiss it. So I'll just go and get my balloon. I'll be back in a sec. So I've just got the balloon blown up a little bit because I only want to do a small balloon smash. And make sure that you wipe your balloon off between each little kiss, otherwise you'll end up with a bit of mud. Maybe even go back in again. Okay, so that just gives a pretty little centre um, to all of those. And that will continue to develop over the next few minutes. Right, so I'm looking at the composition. There's a tiny little bit of paint splatter there. You can just get that off by just putting your finger, pushing your finger in there and you can move the paint straight off and you think that like there as well just gets rid of that okay so i think that's quite pretty even though as i say i had that bit of a malfunction um they've still come together quite nicely now just trying to decide whether i blow anything more out do I need anything else I think I'd like to just put a little bit of something here keep this as negative space but put something else just there just another little flower Yellow. Mm, 
Just grab the footstool so that I can lean over and hopefully get close enough. Excuse me for a moment.
Okay. So, to spin or not to spin, this is the question. I'll give it a slight spin. Because I haven't got a very thick base down, I haven't got a pillow, so to speak, um, then I don't have to spin it out because the paint's not going to be too thick and it will dry quite nicely. However, it is also nice when you just slightly spin out the flowers. So I'll just do a very slow spin on this. And then just slowly spin the other way. And then back this way, just nice and slow. So they're not going to move too far. But it should also bring out a few, ex well, it doesn't bring out extra cells. What it does is it expands the cells that are already there. really good that this um, very heavy tile can actually whoop, be spun on the spinner. Right, I don't think I'll take that much further. There's that moment when you think, should I have actually spun that out or should I have left it? And I don't know. I think I should have left it. Okay, so I'll bring you down for a close-up. My little mini blower is now working again, so apparently it doesn't like to do too much work at a time. But here is the finished. Some of these flowers are still lovely. I think I would have preferred it not to have been spun out. Um, but it's too late now, I can't go back. So I'll just take you up and show you the whole composition. So there it is, guys. Hope you like it. I hope you've learnt something today. Um, I certainly have um, learnt a lot. I always do. So if you'd like to like um, the video and subscribe to my channel. I'd much appreciate it. That would be great. Um, and I look forward to being back here again soon um, with some more compositions for you. And um, until then, stay safe, enjoy your painting journey, and um, I'll see you when I see you. Bye.